Right now at six, a woman's car stolen at the gas pump, but she wasn't giving up without a fight. Wallet pain continues at the grocery store with inflation cooling. Why are those food prices still so high? We have the answers from the experts. And calls for a ceasefire in Gaza growing louder across Connecticut. What people in two communities are doing as they look for an end to the war. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good Tuesday morning. Thanks so much for starting your day off with us here at Fox 61 and Fox 61 Plus America Areas. And I'm Keith McGill. Very grateful to be spending the morning with you as we get a first check of the forecast. Meteorologist Matt Scott joining us at 6 o'clock. Good morning. Good Hi. morning to you both. Nice to see you on this Tuesday as we go through what is still looking like an absolutely fantastic and absolutely problem-free work week. It's another picture-perfect sunrise. Temperatures just a shade cooler than they were at this time yesterday. But sunny overall. Get a couple clouds late in the day and seasonal temperatures. There's lots of words that we use this time of year to describe the weather. Mild, how about milder, but downright warm is not something we throw around too often and yet that's what we have in store. We are looking good on the satellite radar picture not only here but around a very light wind out of the north. Temperatures between 21 and 28, 27 in the capital city, 28 on the green in New Haven. We're down to the lower 20s uh, in the Litchfield Hills which is still fine. Temperatures on the way up to the upper 30s. We'll aim for 40 degrees with nothing but a load of sunshine on tap for today. And again, these numbers by comparison, cool compared to what we're going to see later on this week. We'll talk about that coming up. Let's go to the roads right now. First time at 601, I get to say good morning, Rachel Piscatelli. Hey, good morning, Matt. For the most part, things are running smoothly out on the roads. No incidents to report at this hour. And most of the road work that we had out there this morning has wrapped up for your morning commute. So we'll take a live look outside now over in New Haven this morning, just out by Long Wharf, where we have light volume out on the roads this morning. And overall traffic is running smoothly over in East Haven now, 95 both directions, light volume there. So we'll take Take a peek at your drive times currently. New Haven to Old Saybrook is 27 minutes and Brantford to New Haven is a smooth seven minute drive on the southbound side of 95. Keith and Erica, back to you. All right, uh, it is nice to things, see things going smoothly on the roads. We're also checking the weather throughout the morning. A reminder, you can download our Fox 61 News app for up to the minute weather and traffic updates throughout the morning when you are on the go. A reminder for you that we are as mm -hmm. well. Uh, as, we, as we transition on this morning, national data from the last few months showing inflation is cooling. Still, Erica, many people say their wallets are not feeling the relief at the grocery store. No, they are not. 72% of people surveyed in an Axios News poll reported that groceries are where they feel most affected by inflation. We have Fox 61's Angelo Bavaro joining us. He spoke with experts to find out why some prices are just not coming down. Yeah, Erica, Keith, good morning. And two things to keep in mind with this story. The level of prices, that is way up since 2020, but the rate at which those prices are changing that has returned to fairly normal levels. Now this graph, take a look, paints the picture. Axios News crunching the numbers from the government data, tracking the price of a basket of groceries that cost $100 back in December of 2019. Well, at the end of 2020, that weekly bill would have risen to $103.97. 2021, take a look, that's where things really took off. That bill would have been nearly $111 that December. And then prices, they kept soaring, taking that bill to nearly $124 at the end of 2022. And then finally, in December of 2023, that weekly bill was $125.51. Now, some more context here. Grocery inflation, that peaked in August of 2022 at 13.5%, which is a modern high. That number is way down over the course of 2023. Grocery prices rose 1.3%, but the problem for us is that that increase came on top of those earlier increases. You're going to buy a can of soup or a box of Cheerios or something like that. Those prices are pretty much baked in any price increases from a year or two ago. So they're going to stay like that now. That's the new plateau, if you will. That's the new uh, baseline price. And yeah, they may not increase as quickly as they did last year or the last couple of years, but they're not going to drop to where they were three years ago. 
Now, new this week, the Biden administration is calling on grocery retailers to cut prices, accusing stores of ripping off shoppers. One of his economic advisors says companies that have seen input prices come down should be passing those savings along to customers, warning that the president will call those retailers out. Keith and Erica, I will send things back to you. All right, Angelo, thanks so much. A lot of information there. I'll meet at 605, a man accused of trying to break into a Wallingford home in what police say was an attempted home invasion is expected to appear in court today. Police say 31-year-old Javier Andujar used a golf club to smash the windows at a home on Concord Lane, and then he took off running. Police caught up with him a short time later. Andujar is also accused of trying to open and search through cars as well. And police in Newington are investigating a carjacking that happened in someone's driveway. They say an armed man walked up to a home on Saddle Hill Road early Saturday morning. An SUV in the driveway was warming up. The owner had the keys inside the house. When he came out to the SUV, the armed man pointed his gun and demanded those keys. Police found the SUV in Hartford yesterday. They say it was spotted at several gas stations that were robbed or burglarized over the weekend. A woman's car stolen at a gas station in Bristol. Video from the Valero on Pine Street from yesterday. This woman inside the gas station when someone gets out of a white car and walks up to her Dodge Charger. She comes running out and falls. The thieves realize she's still on the ground, so he gets into her car and drives off while well, the woman hangs on. Police oh. have not said if that woman was hurt. My goodness. And police say the car is a Massachusetts mm. license plate with the registration 2CTP85. If you see the stolen black Dodge Charger or have any information on the theft, you're urged, Erica, to call police. Well, with the war between Israel and Hamas entering its fifth month this week, tension is running high, not just in Gaza, but all over the world. Absolutely. Here in our state, people calling on community leaders to condemn the fighting. The issue came up at two meetings last night. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin joining us live from Windsor with details on this. Brooke, council members there voted on a resolution involving all that's happening here. Yeah, absolutely. So last night, those Windsor Town Council members discussed and then voted on a resolution calling for a ceasefire between Israel and Israel and Hamas. Now, it did pass, but it was after quite a bit of heated debate, both from the council members themselves and also those who were attending that meeting, just those people that were in the audience there. This all started at the January City Council meeting a few weeks ago when a unofficial discussion of an Israel Hamas ceasefire was held then. Now, that wasn't a vote. That was just something that they were talking about. This month, the councillors turned to that discussion into a resolution after hearing from people who wanted the matter brought up officially. The agenda item was labeled as a resolution calling for an immediate de-escalation and permanent ceasefire in Israel and Palestine. Some officials, including the mayor, spoke in favor of the measure, while others kept quiet or said that the item was just a waste of time because a town in Connecticut has no weight in international matters. The ceasefire resolution passed with five votes. The other four members did not vote against the measure, but chose to vote present instead, which implied no vote for that. The mayor did not let every member of the council speak on the matter, saying she was standing up for her opinion and taking a vote either way. So I condemn all targeting of civilians in Israel, in Palestine. I am focused on a pursuit of peace and shared humanity. The hostilities have to end. Now, this wasn't the only heated meeting that happened last night. New Haven Mayor Justin Elliker's State of the City address was interrupted by demonstrators calling for a ceasefire. Several people were escorted out by police and threatened with arrest, but nobody was actually taken into custody there. He was also able to finish that speech eventually after they were interrupted. That is just, again, one of the two things that happened last night with kind of ties to that same thing. And both mayors say that they are open to having a discussion about these topics. It's something that they will discuss with people. They say that they just want to make sure that it's done in the right time and at the right place. Live in Windsor, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Brooke. Just about 610. And as Brooke just mentioned there, New Haven Mayor Justin Elliker delivering his State of the City address. His speech tackled a wide range of topics, everything from the need for more affordable housing 
to supporting a growing population to the Elm City's changing image as a tourist destination. It's an exciting time to be in New Haven because New Haven is hopping. The secret's out, right? We're no longer just the cultural capital of Connecticut. Increasingly, we are a national and global destination well beyond our state's borders. There was also focus on the future of the city as it's just 10 years away from celebrating its 250th anniversary. And that is exciting. Well, in the meantime, jurors in the Michelle Traconis trial are getting a closer look at DNA evidence in yes, court yesterday. The state went through dozens of pieces of evidence that ended up being a match for Jennifer Dulos. Those pieces of evidence were compared to see if there was DNA matching Dulos' estranged husband, Fotis, or Fotis' girlfriend, Michelle Traconis. Experts say the bags Fotis used to dump items in Hartford had his DNA on them. They also say one of those bags had a print matching Traconis's. The DNA profile from item 883S7 is at least 780,000 times more likely to occur if it originated from Michelle Traconis. The defendant in her third interview with police indicated to them that she held a bag open for Mr. Dulos as he deposited something in the bag. Is it possible that her DNA could have gotten on the bag as she was holding it? Yes, that's, that's possible. Now, a second test was run in 2023 with a newer sample, and that number decreased. Traconis' attorney said the DNA sample is the equivalent of three human skin cells. Michelle was in a truck with her boyfriend. The fact that three or even ten cells could have gotten on uh, him when he got out and uh, threw away those bags does not even suggest that she ever touched those bags. Prosecutors say only a little bit of DNA is needed to make a connection. Well, the trial is expected to pick up again today at 10 a.m. in Stanford, and you can watch it live now on Fox 61 Plus.